Okay, this is Mike Franklin. I'm going to do a, uh, um, a video on this Piper Colt I have for sale. Uh, basically, this discussion is going to be about the useful load and why I, I purchased this airplane. Um, uh, I have... Um, the useful load is... Let's see, the empty weight is just under 1,000 pounds, and the... The uh, useful load is um, 652 pounds. It's a two-seater, and and it indicates that you can uh, use the back storage area, which I'll show you here, um, and you can put up to 100 pounds in the back and uh, behind the seats here. And it has two gas tanks. They hold 18 gallons apiece. So at 652 pounds, um, full fuel is 262, 216 pounds. Uh, let me verify that. It's, that would be um, that would be 36 um, times six. 36 times six equals 216 pounds. So you've got 216 pounds. Um, what you can do is. Um, so 652 minus 216 is 436 pounds. So with full fuel, and keep in mind, full fuel, this airplane burns about six gallons an hour at 75% cruise. I, you know, I've been flying it for, uh, 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 it, it just it burns six gallons an hour. Um, it's just it's it's very consistent about that. You know, climb it probably might burn eight gallons an hour, but overall, if you fly it normally, it's burned six gallons an hour. If you're on extended, you know, um, uh, flights, probably does a little better. If you get up at altitude, and um, you know, might do a little bit better. But you know, for everyday flying, it gets six gallons an hour. Thirty-six gallons um, is six hours worth of fuel. You're not going to spend six hours in this airplane, um, so you don't really need 36 gallons of fuel. I normally have uh, the right wing. I keep about uh, you know, you know, uh, six to ten gallons of fuel in that, and uh, the and I fill up the uh, left wing, which is 18. So I'll have um, 24 to 26 gallons, you know, for normal flying. Which would be call it call it um, 24 gallons. 24 times six equals that's 144 pounds. So 652 minus 144 equals 508 pounds. So you can have uh, two 200 pound people and 100 pounds worth of gear. I generally fly around with maybe 20 pounds worth of stuff in the back. I have. You know, all kinds of, um, you know, stuff to, uh, you know, emergency gear. You know, I got water filtration. I got sleeping bag. I've got tools. I got water. I got, you know, various things. And um, and so, um, you know, maybe 20 pounds worth of stuff. And, um, and uh, well, the problem is I weigh 260. So, um so two five oh eight minus two sixty equals two hundred forty eight pounds. So I could have a person who weighs two hundred and fifty pounds and um you know I'll have to get rid of some gear or get rid of some fuel. But uh, you know uh, I bought this airplane versus a Cessna one fifty because number one my my knees were on the dash. I have more room, you know I'm you know, I'm 6'1", 260 pounds, and I fit in this airplane just fine. When there's two two people my size in it, you know, it's a little tight, uh, ear shoulder to shoulder, uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, and there's plenty of room for plenty of gear in the back. But if um, um, at um, uh, but a Cessna 150 is the useful load is more like 575. So that 75 pound difference is significant, you know, when you're my size. If you're somebody that weighs 175 pounds, it's not as big a deal.
But if you're a bigger guy, it is a big deal. And so that's why I bought this versus the Cessna 150. Um, you know, I like the way the Cessna 150 flies. Um, but um, but you know, I find this comparable. I like this too. And um, and I think this is a more classic looking airplane. It's, um, I mean, it just, you know, it's just, it, it just looks like a classic airplane. Cessna 150 is kind of boring. And I, and I just... You know, I, I don't want to fly what everybody else flies, but, you know, from all practical purposes, um, this is a Cessna 150 with 75 pounds more useful load. And, um, and you know, they, they, they essentially serve the same purpose. Um, so, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what more to say about it. I, I essentially could not buy a Cessna 150 because... It is essentially, when you're my size, it's a one-person airplane. This is a two-person airplane. And, um, and so, uh, but to move up to a, a Cessna 172 is, you know, it's significantly more money. Because, you know, it's not just the cost of the airplane. It's the overall cost of, of, uh, of ownership or even a, a, a tri-pacer with a 135-horsepower motor. <clears throat> that burns eight gallons an hour. And a 172 probably burns about eight gallons an hour. And the difference of two gallons an hour, you know, that's $10 an hour. And you, you add that up, um, um, let's see, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just, it, it, and, and the over in, in the cost to maintain it is, you know, that much more. And, and so, you know, it all adds up. Also, what's important is, is that, um, this is maybe 300 pounds lighter than a Cessna 172. So when you're pulling it in and out of the hangar by yourself and you're in the snow or whatever, you know, that makes a difference. You know, you, uh, you know, if, if you're older and you, you're going to have a hard time pulling that thing, you know, through the snow and putting it back in that, you know, that that's important. Um, it's an important ramification. Um, and the wingspan is 30 feet. The wingspan on a Cessna 172 is 36 feet. So when you put a Cessna 172 back into a hangar that's 40 feet wide, you got to be really careful not to whack the wing on something. It's very easy to do when you whack that wing, and it's going to cost you some money. This thing's 30 feet, so you got a um, you, you know you got a five foot buffer on either side. With a Cessna 172, you have a two foot buffer on either side, and um, and you have to be very, very careful bringing the thing in and out of a hangar that's 40 feet. Um, and also, I believe a Cessna 172 is, is 24 feet long. This is 20 feet long. And so the depth of it, so it just leaves a lot more room in your, in your, in your hangar. So the overall cost of, of ownership is, is less. And it's a classic-looking airplane. It has a good useful load, and um, and um, and in this particular airplane is it's just very turnkey. Everything has been done, so um, uh, you know that's why that's why you would get a Piper Colt. Um, you know, if you need to have three or four people fly with you, um, you know, then you're going to have to get, spend more money, another twenty grand. Uh, on a 172, and your your co overall cost of ownership is going to be probably 25 percent higher, or so. And uh, you know, and if money's not an object, then um, then get assessed to 172. But if it is an object, uh, consider this. Um, particularly if you're a bigger guy, if you're if you're 160 pounds, 170 pounds, get yourself assessed to 150. You know, you'll be. Uh, You'll be happy with it. They're good planes, <clears throat> um, and, um, and but you know, you know, I'm 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 very happy with um, with what's transpired with this airplane. It's uh, uh, I just I have a lot of confidence in it, and um, and um, and it's just a it's a classic looking airplane. I I just enjoy sitting in the hangar and just looking at it. It's it's cool. It's uh, it's the um, it's a 1962. It's the same age as I am, and uh, and um, and I just find Cessnas to be kind of boring. To tell you the truth, uh, the interiors are boring. The interior on this thing, I just think it's, 
I just think it's cool. Um, and the and you know the avionics are all you know modern, and um, and uh, I actually I, I have an ELT in this space right here, so um, this is an older photo, but um, you know I just think it's uh, uh, you know it's got more interior room than a Cessna 150, and also uh, when you talk about a Cessna 172, it's kind of weird. It just doesn't look like a good design. The door on a, a 172, when you get in and out, it's, um, you know, the seat is so far forward that um, it's really not easy to get in and out of it. Um, this thing is, um, you know, you step up on this rung. Let me show you the exterior. Okay, let me see if I have a chef. Okay, you step on this rung right here, and or, or you can step on the tire, then the rung. And you grab one of these posts and you swing into it. It's not that big a deal, but with a with a Cessna, the door is really far forward, and um, and and it's just it, it just isn't that easy to get in and out. It's not a huge difference, but um, I just don't like the way the doors work on a Cessna 172. Uh, Cessna 177. That's different. That's really nice, you know, to get in and out of. But um, but that's a you know that's a far more expensive airplane, but um, um, you know just you just step. You know I I, I don't use the wheel skirts because I don't want to step on them and ruin them. Um, I think I have them in the garage here somewhere. You can see them. Uh, let me see here. I've got uh, exterior. No, I think it's in one of the videos, but um, uh, you can actually, I think you can see it. Uh, there's one of them, it's right here. So it's got wheel skirts, you know, uh, but I don't use them uh, because I like to step on the wheel to get in. So you step on the wheel or step on here and you grab a post and you swing in. And once you get used to doing it, it's no big deal. Um, but with the 172, you know, you got to, you know, you got to really step up into the thing, and that door is so far forward. It's you got to be a contortionist to get in the darn thing, and um, and and the same to get out of it. So I I think this is easier to get in and out of the 172, and um, and it's also easier than a than a 150. But uh, but that's um, you know that's my opinion. I just think it's a uh, it's a more classic looking airplane. It just looks like an antique car. And, um, but, you know, I mean, with all the upgrades I've done with this airplane, I, 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 I sincerely believe that it is better than it was when it was brand new. It's got modern avionics in it, you know, the ADSB that, you know, uh, my understanding is half the airlines do not have a setup like what this airplane has. Um, and, uh, it's uh you know it's it's really nice and the com radio is really nice and uh but anyway uh 652 pound useful load and just you know do the math two people and then 100 pounds in the back seat if you need it um uh, and then 36 gallons of fuel that's 216 pounds that's six hours of fuel you don't need six hours of fuel most of the time so you know put in 24 gallons and you'll have um and you'll have, uh, um, like I say, 24 gallons of fuel minus 652. 652 minus 144 equals, you've got 508 uh, full fuel, I mean, you know, full, uh, four hours worth of fuel. You, um, you have 508 pounds to work with. Um, you know, and uh, and that's that's a you know a pretty good useful load. Okay, um, again, Mike Franklin regarding my 1962 Piper Colt, PA 22108. Uh, thank you.